Welcome to Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, and I am your one of your hosts, uh, Davy Beauchamp. To the right of me, CX. And to the left of me, I'm heavily medicated, aka Clayton Wick. Uh, today we're talking about. I don't know why. Wait, it's not. It's not really today, because it won't be today when you actually see this. It'll be another day. Um, but we're talking about uh, episode three of Torchwood Miracle Day. Um, yeah, so let's uh, just jump right in like we normally do. Um, How do you feel about the episode? It's getting better and better. Uh, they pretty much destroyed every expectation that I'd built up from the second episode and then just put something else in its place. I'm kind of pleased with that. Cool. Well, I mean, what, because you said you had expectations, what were you expecting? Uh... I expected some level of moral ambiguity regarding Danes, and it's pretty clear that didn't exist anymore by the end of this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I expected something similar with uh, Kitzinger, and they... I still don't know exactly what she's doing, but the more I see of her, the more I'm convinced she might actually be the devil. <laughs> uh, Not just because she's ginger. It's just, they keep changing things up, and that excites me. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely get back to uh, Jillian, because I have some questions about her that I'm, I'm gonna pose to you guys. Um, so, um, yeah, I have to agree. I, I love the first two episodes. I think the th episode three, it just, it's taking us just up and up and up. I don't think there's been like this. I don't think there's been a bad scene yet. I think everything has worked extremely well. I did like last week's episode more, but this one really does build on the story and take it somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, I mean, I felt like my biggest problem with the first two episodes, they were definitely, um, you know, setting everything up and, like, putting all, all the pieces in place for for the story. And I felt like this episode, we actually got the story moving forward, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was really happy to see that. So, um, what did you guys really like about this episode? I'm going to start over here first. Uh, Any particular scene, character, dialogue? I mean, what really was just like, oh man, I really love the way they pulled that off or did that. Uh, I kind of liked, um, the fact that Jack's jacket is just good for one night stands. <laughs> That's something that... I didn't realize was the case, but really should have seen coming. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was quite interesting. And also, uh, the Doctor Scarf is also really good for one-night stands as well. Okay. Yeah. So what about you? What did I like? Yeah, what was, I mean, was there something in particular that you just like, wow, that was incredible. I, I, that was just a, a phenomenal scene, line, dialogue, characterization, or acting, you know, what, what really just was like, bam. Well, I mean, there was the whole thing was pretty much bam for me. What I really liked was when they found out, you know, the Pfizer Corporation. I thought that was really cool because it was like, holy shit. Um, something more subtle I liked was just kind of like the bonding between Esther and and Gwen. That was well, it's really interesting seeing Gwen in a mentor role. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say. Um, and I have that down here. I really like that scene with them together. Mm -hmm. I think um, just sort of, and I don't like doing this a lot, but comparing it to the other, other seasons of Torchwood, I mean, I think this really shows a growth in her character, this, this, yeah. especially this particular episode. Mm -hmm. Not only did you see Gwen in that sort of mental role, with Esther, I mean, and that was a phenomenal scene with the two of them when they're walking together, or just when she was, Esther was translating British terms to English terms for Gwen. Yeah. Um, I thought Gwen also saw a lot of growth and development when Jack's there pouring his heart out to her, and the second the baby pops on, up on the screen yeah. with Reese, all of her attention's diverted. Yeah. It's like <clears throat> Gwen now has something more important than just. Jack in her life. Yeah. And like Reese was giving her hell about first trying to trouble you run off with, you know, Captain Jack, you know, Captain Bollocks there. But I think that one scene shows that to her, Reese and the baby are more important to her now than Jack. 
even though she loves being in Torchwood, she loves the action adventure, when it, when it's all said and done, she will always come home. I don't think she has that that vibe to cheat anymore. I think that I, I think that was just growth of the character, or at least that's yeah. what I'm hoping. At this point, it really seems like Jack is the only member of the new Torchwood who actually considers Torchwood a priority. Yeah. Everyone else just wants to get it done and, you know, be done with it. Well, I mean, he was also the one that was willing to cover everything up to destroy all existence of Torchwood. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's the one that cares the most. Um, okay, let me... And I gotta say, I, I really, even though the scene is absolutely insane, I love uh, Oswald's confession at the end to Jack. Oh, oh yeah. That was... That was <laughs> Holman pulled horrible. off that dialogue. I couldn't Small imagine anybody way. else doing that except for maybe Anthony Hopkins. I mean... <laughs> But I mean, he just pulled it off with, I mean, without missing a beat. And the more he talked, the creepier it got. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, which, you know, erased all, you know, yes, this dude's a bastard, plain yeah. and simple. Which is great because they spend the entire episode to that point sort of deliberately putting him in a moral gray area. Yeah. Just so they can come in with that scene at the end of the episode and go, okay. If you felt bad for him, that means you're a bad person. Yeah. Okay, um, and I'm just going to start here with the top of my notes, and we're going to work our way down. Some will be questions, some of, some other things, until we build to the new special, or at least a new thing I'm going to try with this episode that I think will be a lot of fun. So Wayne Knight's character, is he a good actor, or was he telling the truth Someone about... He was the he's the guy from Seinfeld who's who played yes. the, the CIA director. Is he a good actor, or is he actually telling the truth about not knowing anything? Or, I mean, is he a red herring, and we've seen what we're going to see of him for the most part? I really don't know. I think... I feel like we might see a little bit more of it, but I... I do kind of see him. He doesn't seem like the kind of character that would be able to pull something that complex off. I feel like he is a puppet. So he's like a pawn in the game. Yeah, yeah he's, he's not really important anymore, I think. Yeah. Um, I did like the fact that they were talking about, you know, as much as they have to change the medical system, they now also have to change the judicial system. Yeah. Yep. Because murder has to be redefined. Because that was pretty g brutal, the, the fact that, you know, that one lady that came in there... Was suffocated, strangled... Yeah, she was strangled. Her entire brain oxygen throat drive. and stuff was crushed, depiled her, and then her brain went damaged, yet she's still alive. Yeah. And that's not actually murder right now. Yeah, I... One of the things I think is the best part of Torchwood right now is the way that they keep expanding on the implications of removing death from the equation. Yeah, and like I said, this is honestly Davies at his best. I mean, this this is definitely, I mean, the flow's been great. Um, I just hope he doesn't let us down in the end, because sometimes he could do that, but so far, three episodes in, he's, he's rocking it. Yeah, but back to Doctor Who, he's always been good with the high concept stuff. It's just now he's getting this one concept and is now really exploring it to yeah. the fullest of his ability. Well, I mean, he did really good with uh, Children of Men. Uh, I think that was what it was called, the, the, the miniseries. So I, I have high, high expectations for this because he has done a damn good job so far. Um, I gotta say, I want a soulless mask. The soulless masks are awesome, and I want to wear it at Dragon. Really, really bad. I just, I just had to throw that in there. I'm curious how they're actually going to factor into the story at this point. Um, hence another reason why I haven't shown you next week's trailer. Oh. You're going to get an idea of where that's all going. Okay. Um, oh, okay. We have to talk about one of the most controversial scenes in this week's episode, which was actually BBC did have it edited out of some, some regions. Uh, the nude sex scene. Huh. Um, not only with... Jack and the bartender, but with uh, Rex and the doctor. Um, do you think the scene was pointless? Do you think it was needed? Um, did you think it was going to be worse? Or did it meet your expectations with what they were going to do? What do you feel about the sex scene? For Jack, I think it was it worked well just because it built up for him the reason to get shit-faced and then call Gwen, being like, you know, we're a team, you know, just you and me. Um, it kind of flowed well for that. I felt it was kind of just random for Rex and the Doctor to just kind of be like, 
Oh, dress my wounds. Let's fuck. Let me insult you and your your mother and your choices, and then I want you to go undercover for me. Yeah. Now, that was kind of douchey, and they could have done that in a different way without them banging. It works for me because for all characters involved, it's presented as a really bad decision. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I thought that it was kind of an interesting move to intercut the gay sex and the straight sex to ensure that really only about a tenth of the viewers will ever be able to reliably use it as porn. <laughs> that's, that's funny. But do you think they had built up the concept of the sex scene way too much? Um, because... Because, I mean, the actor that had the scene with Jack started uh, bad-mouthing the show and bad-mouthing the scene um, before it was even aired, um, which I thought maybe they would pull it for that, but be, just to get him out of the scene. But, of course, like Lacey said, I think it was needed for him to do that bridging the gap to, um, to that, you know, soulful confession to Gwen, which fell upon deaf ears. Um, but, you know... Th I thought they'd built it up way too much. I don't think yeah. it was as bad as they were originally hinting it to, to be. No, it wasn't a big it deal. It was really cute. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was just a lot of ass, and oh well, it's butt. Okay. How many bank accounts do you think Jack actually has out there? Uh, I don't really know if that's something that's really worth exploring. <laughs> I figure it's just... Oh, I, I figure he's just got... I don't know. A big bag somewhere that's just full of debit cards under <laughs> assumed names. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I guess I just like that line. Because it makes sense. I mean, a dude that's been around was smart this long, was smart enough to open a savings account and just let it accrue interest. Yeah. I, I think that's it absolutely genius. It made me genius. think of that episode of Futurama. That's what it made me think yeah. of. So, Rex, I have to ask this question again because I, I think it's relevant. Do you think he will live or die? Uh, too early to say. I just think that... I do think he does something interesting to the dynamic of the show, mm -hmm. in that he and Jack are still testing each other to figure out who's actually in charge. Yeah. Which brings up another question I had. Who's in charge? Do you think it's Jack, Rex, or Gwen? I... I don't really know that anyone is in charge at this point, but it's... Gwen is the only one who's actually able to... Keep everything under control to the point that she is actually doing things that help. It's kind of like watching animals fighting for dominance. Um, so, Rex, throughout the show, so far, just just with episode three, sometimes he's a, a total ass, other times he isn't. Do you, at this point, do you have any sympathy for that character? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really do. Yeah, everything mm -hmm. that's happened to him is horrible and either life-changing or life-ending. And he's just bouncing from one thing to another, making the sort of making the sorts of stupid mistakes that any person can be counted on to make in those circumstances. And he pays for it every time. But I mean, I think his heart is in the right place. I think that he's definitely one of the good guys. It's just he's not very good at it right now. Okay, that that, that brings up an interesting point because uh, it's sort of hinted at in this episode just a little, and I think we're going to get more of it next episode, it appears that his wound is not healing. Yeah. When it comes down to it, do you think he's going to make the right choice? Because there's a good chance that when they turn this thing off, he dies. Do you think he, he is a strong enough character, you know, in principle, that he will be willing to sacrifice his life like, you know, the, the the needs of the one, or wait, the good, or what is it, the good of the many outweigh the needs of the one? Yeah. Do you think he's going to be able to do that? Will he be able to sacrifice himself to save the rest of the world? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think so? I agree. Well, his life ended with the accident. Right now, all that he has going for him is the job. Yeah. He has nothing to go back to at this point. He has to see, th he has to see things through to the end, no matter what that means. And I don't think that it will really be any source of angst for him. So, Jillian, mm -hmm. we, we mentioned her a little. Do you think she's human, alien, something else? And do you think she is actually a bigger part of this than they're actually hinting at? 
Uh, I really want to say that she's just middle management in a horribly evil corporation. I think it's a little too soon to tell right now. Uh, it's for it, me. It would be really <clears throat> easy to put her in the position of like secret mastermind of everything. And that's why I'm hoping they don't do that. I really think it's more interesting if she's just somebody who's really trying to angle for a promotion out of all this chaos. Um, do you think she arranged Oswald's beating? I don't think so. I think she just took advantage of it. Yeah. It just seems so right place, right time sort of thing. Yeah, the only question mark for me is why she was even there. Following him. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one more thing about the sex scene. I did like the uh, the safe sex message thrown in there. Yeah. Because um, honestly, strangely enough, I don't think it felt forced or anything. It mm. felt very. It felt like I mean, if it, it felt like it fit, because yeah. I mean that is another point with everything with the birth control in the water to the fetuses that aren't naturally aborting because of deformities and stuff like that that would naturally cause the the uh, the fetus to abort. I mean, that was a good point. I mean, could you imagine living the rest of your life with like something like AIDS yeah. or hepatitis just eating away at you and just being in pain? I mean, yeah, Jack had a really good point about that. Uh, the TV preacher, because we saw him more than once this episode yeah. in the background. Yeah. Do you think he's going to play a bigger part in this? Or do you think he w they were just having that just for this this episode? You only really see him when Danes is in the room. I think it's just, I think it's where he's eventually <coughs> going to draw his inspiration. I think he's just going to eventually go, hey, wait a minute, I can do what this guy is doing even better. Because we've seen some hints of that in the promotional material for the yeah. series. Yeah. Um, I gotta say, I love Jack's hangover scene. Yeah. That was a great scene. Because uh, you can tell that he has not experienced that in thousands of years. Yep. What a hangover is. Yeah. Um, One of the better gay jokes that I've seen in a BBC-funded production. <laughs> <laughs> um, the senator. Um, do you think he's going to play a bigger part of this? Or was he just, what he served the purpose that he was going to serve? Can't say. Okay. And another, another question. Um, when... Rex is on the phone with the triangle group. That's what I'm going to refer to him as right now because of the symbol. Do you think they're actually saying something to Rex? Because some of his facial expressions kind of, to me, show that there might have been something said to him. Or some kind so. of noise. Or do you think it was just... I think it was dead air. Just dead air. Well, I mean, I figure they were tra tracing him and stuff. But, yeah. And I gotta say, one, one thing about the diner scene that I kind of liked, at first I thought that the people were taking pictures of Danes because they were fans. Mm -hmm. So I liked the fact, especially because they didn't look like your, your clean-cut type people. He kind of looked like all these people would be fans of Danes. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that they wanted to beat the shit out of him. Yeah. That was a nice little uh, nice little thing. Yeah. And now we're going to come to the, the, the new part of, of, of the show, oh, which is going to be sort of a competition between the, between the two of you. I'm going to be scoring. Yeah, so I hope you're paying attention to the episode. Partially. Because Damn the, Android phone! Because the person that doesn't get the answers right, or who loses, walks home tonight. In oh the boy. rain? I don't have a fucking umbrella, you douche. <laughs> I'll pee on your cat. Um, we're recording this, and that's not really nice to say on, on air. I don't... Okay. I'm sex, I can get away with this. No, you can't. Okay. And I'm Asian. Okay, here we go. These are my quick fire questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there some particular order in which we answer them? Uh, just just yell out your answer. Okay. Okay. This is an experiment. Okay. I've got anxiety problems, man. This is not good. Rex or Jack? Who's the bigger asshole? Oh, Jack. Jack. Mm. You both lose points there. Fuck. Because to me, I Jack's totally the bigger ass. Okay, Rex. Will he live or will he die? Die. Live. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Gwen, is she over Jack? Yes. I don't know. Mm. Okay. Sex scene. Was it needed or not? Needed. 
needed. Good, good answer, good answer. Gwen Esther, do we like this team? Yes. yes. Good. Uh, Rex, will you betray the team in the end? No. No. Hmm. Better lover, Rex or Jack? Jack. <laughs> Jack. God! Jack's pillow talk doesn't make you cry. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. Okay, did Jillian set up the attack on, on Oswald? No. no. Okay. Washington, Washington Memorial, phallic or not? Yes. Yes. Okay, Jack and Esther, will it happen? No. No. Okay. I'm pretty sure Gwen won't let it happen. <laughs> well, there's one scene that made me wonder. He kind of, they kind of looked at each other. Yeah. Yeah, um, but Gwen won't let it happen. Who would you want to uh, lead Torchwood? Jack, Rex, or Gwen? Gwen. Gwen. Is the Triangle Group really worried? Yes. Yes. Oswald Danes, are they turning him into a messiah-like figure? He's turning him into a messiah-like figure. Uh, I don't know. See, I don't think it's them. I think it's the corporation that, that will. Well, he's been angling for that since before he got their backing. Yeah. He's, but with their backing is what? survival instinct. Also, Oprah. Yeah. Oprah. Oh. So you guys did pretty good. You guys did pretty good on that. I'm going to declare the winner next time. You'll find out who won this round of uh, uh, quick fire questions. I'm going to bring a gun. We get to find out a lot sooner. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to make either one of them rock home in the rain. I'm not that mean. At least not this week. Though somebody, He's got an umbrella, I don't. Though somebody did, you know, and say they're going to sing bad to my cat. I'm not literally going to go pee on your cat, that's mean. Okay. Your cat could probably kill me before I could get to him. Probably. Okay. <laughs> How much are you going to edit this? I really can't edit that part, unfortunately. Oh, great. Um... So, um... My little present to you guys. Love. Yes. Do we have any final words, thoughts, or... I want to see the freaking preview so I can get even more pumped. Yeah, that's my final thought. I'm excited, that's what I'm saying. It's getting better. Don't pee on cats. Is that your final? That's all I've got. Okay, and anything about the episode you want to wrap some up with? Not really. I mean, I think we pretty much said it all in the last, I don't know, 30 minutes, however long yeah. it's been. And th this, is how, this is how I would answer the quick fire questions really quick. This is how I'm going to end it. I think Rex is the bigger asshole. I think Rex will die. I think Gwen is over Jack. Uh, the sex scene, I think it was needed. I love the G Gwen Esther team. Um, I do think there's, there's going to be, if Rex doesn't betray the team, there will be a moment of hesitation where he actually contemplates it because I don't think he wants to die. I do think Jack is a better lover. Look how old he is. Um, <laughs> did Jillian set up the attack on Oswald? I have to question that. Um, Washington Memorial, definitely phallic. Jack and Esther, possible. Um, definitely want Gwen leading the team. It's always run better when she has led it. Um, is the Triangle Group worried or scared of Torchwood? Possibly. And yeah, the o Oswald... Oswald Danes is definitely uh, being portrayed as a messiah-like figure, and I think it's only going to grow. So until next week, next time, because it really won't be a week from now, because YouTube loves us now and gives us longer video time, so I don't have to edit as long, so these will be coming out faster. But until next time, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing out.